Hey, brother Dixon. What about you? Well, um, I'll say this. I, I see we have two two couples here, so I guess I can represent another entity of black love. Um, you know, to me, it's an umbrella, and there are many facets that fall under uh, the umbrella of black love. The first thing that people need to understand about black love and any love in particular, it is not perfect. OK, it is a work yeah. in progress. It's almost like in some, preach, instances, preach. in some instances, you're building a plane while it's in the air. But at the end of the day, as uh, Alicia not said, you have to be resilient and you have to be dedicated to the cause. Um, but taking it from there to a much broader perspective. OK, um, it's that thing, black love. Uh, that helps us to build and sustain our communities. It's the glue that holds us together. Uh, it builds our communities and it creates a path for our children to be successful and confident, okay? So that they're able to go out into the world and be successful and be those community builders without any inferiorities, okay? My grandfather's name is Ulysses Clayton and Theosis T.T. Uh, T. Clayton and Eva Clayton are my grandfather's cousins. And so that's how they're related uh, and how I'm related to Soul City. And the, the common thread for a lot of us tonight has been our relation to black history. And I think that this is a pivotal point to look into our family history and see that we have some connections to black history. And there's either rich traditions of <clears throat> pro progression and, and the things that have helped build this nation, those are in our families. And so um, a lot of things have happened externally to try to break those down, our connections to our families. But I think it's really important to look into your own family, no matter what age you are, look into your own family because you've heard the stories about uh, what's happened with black history, your family's impact on black history. And do you have a torch to carry? So let's talk about Warren County. The right things to invest in. They don't teach you how to create a budget. They won't teach you about the right insurances to have. But next to your degree, that's like the number one thing you need as an adult. And so listening to Ron is basically an education piece that is missing. A lot of times people like to think uh, another culture is progressing because of their skin color. And it's not that. Is that a lot of knowledge has been kept for us from so, for so long that we think it's us, and it's really the lack of knowledge that we're getting. And so the big thing of nutrition and fitness awareness. I know that when I think about nutrition, I think back when I was a child and it seemed like the key thing was you get 30 minutes of physical activity each and every day, learn the food pyramid and drink water and you're good. And that's all that you needed to know. But then as I matriculated through Bennett College and got into my profession of special education, what I learned was oftentimes I was having children, whether in my classroom or observing in other um, places throughout the school, who were labeled as having um, severe behavior problems or being disrespectful because they were falling asleep and they were very irritable or they couldn't focus. Um, and so, again, you had a lot of misdiagnosing. But at the end of the day, it was because of malnutrition. And I, you know, and I want to go all the way back to high school when you see the guy who is the most popular guy and you're trying to figure out why is that guy so popular and networking gets you indoors. It gets you to the best seats. It gets you everything that you want to get to if you do it properly. Um, I think if you sit here and you think about PR, which which uh, Monica is talking about your presence and who you are as a young person changes when people look at you in a particular way. And a lot of times people don't think about the networking part of just, hey, how you doing? Uh, appreciating somebody for something that they're doing, just listening to some, some people. I don't think it was the trade piece of it that was the issue. I think it was more of the appeasement that was the issue. Um, let's appease the white folks so they'll leave us alone. Um, and in doing that, I feel like he made it okay for them to feel like we were inferior and only worthy of certain jobs and, and certain trades. 
Um, whereas, you know, W.E.B. Du Bois, I feel like he kind of took the, the black excellence approach is what I called it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we can be educated. We can, you know, be doctors and lawyers, as Brian was stating. So overall, I personally do feel like it did more harm than good. Um, but, you know, at the same time, we still did need those trade jobs. But I just feel like the manner in which, you know, he he, he gave off that message was, was, was hurtful for the cause. Go out as a team and find someone who may not have all the opportunities because every one of us is given an opportunity in life, may not have all the opportunities because they've made a mistake or something or something otherwise has happened in their lives. So with the second chance scholarship, what we try to do is give them a boost back up. Give them a meaning, a purpose, because all of us on the last dons have a purpose, a purpose in life so that they continue. We all know, you know, I would assume that each of us on the camera right now, you know, we're, we're probably in our 40s or 50s. So we've lived a, a, a life of fulfillment. We understand what it means to give, to extend our arms. We understand what hardship is, right? We understand mm -hmm. what prayer is. We understand, you know, what struggle is. So when you think about that, we only touch a small percentage of those with the second chance scholarship. And we've had that I'm walking out the example. And so <clears throat> sometimes people may have to let you know what the expectation is. And it's not for us to get offended. You know, people always say, well, the church can't tell me what to wear. Well, Burger King gives you a T-shirt to put on and um, we don't fight that. There are many dress codes at different institutions of work. But when it comes to the church, we resist a lot of the protocol that has been established uh, from, from tradition or a way in which we felt that it was necessary to present ourselves to God. So I would tell people, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times when you have discussions like this, it's so contentious and there's so much tension and wrestling, but it's really about listening, understanding, evolving, and then knowing what's necessary and what's not necessary.